I've forgotten something. Of course, miss. You don't really mean of course, miss, do you? Oh, oh no, miss. I, I mean... know. Uh, miss Bennett is to arrive at a party this afternoon at uh, 5.30. 5.30. I forgot to speak to Nora about having her leave here on time. I'll attend to it at once, miss. Thank you, White. Nora, Miss Venice is to leave the house in time to be somewhere by 5.30. Where? A party. Oh. Well, if the party is in China, don't you think she ought to leave a little earlier? Miss Emma says... Miss Venice is dressing. I wonder what that artist could have known about love. Oh, please, dear little fat god of love. Won't you send me one acceptable, well, almost acceptable, sweetheart? Maybe I'll look too much like an iron angel. Certainly I'm flat enough when people are mm -hmm, around and around the merry go round. It's five, miss. Yes, it seems to be five. Your things are all ready, miss. Thank you, Nora. Oh, I wish I didn't have to go. Do you wish something, Miss Bennett? No, thank you, Nora. Bennett's Muir. Why can't you be more exciting? What's the matter with you? You afraid of men? Answer me that. You are, aren't you? Well, just a little. Embarrass me. Well, why should they? Don't embarrass other people. They have everything other girls have. Two eyes, two nose. Well, practically everything. Let me take that. Seems to me that you'll be a little bit heavier. Oh, but I think he's plenty strong now, though. Well, maybe just a little bit heavier. But too strong, not good for ladies and gentlemen. Oh, put some more of that in it, just the same. All right, too bad. Johnny. Yeah? You make some butterfly grand husband. You keep your apartment beautifully. You want to see me exterminating termites. That's where I shine. Or where I flop is an initialing linen. If that's a hint, dear cousin, I'll monogram your blanky blank linen. But first, I want you to do something for me. What? I want you to be nice to Venice. Oh, is she here? No, she will be in a minute. Well, I don't see why. May I get a word in, please? Sure. Now, I want you to be nice to well, her. I'll be nice to her. I always am. I like Venice. I told you I thought you'd escort her to my party tonight. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. But she's my best friend, darling. She must be there. And it isn't very nice for her to have to come alone. Maybe we could hire somebody. Oh, don't be idiotic. Well, Venice generally goes to parties alone. She'll have to do just that tonight. Who are you bringing? Anne Durie. Oh, I hope she poisons you. <laughs> Thanks. And I'll come to your funeral and laugh myself sick. As long as you get sick enough, that'll be okay. Donnie, won't you please bring Venice? She's such a nice girl. She is. She's the nicest girl I know. <laughs> Just about as exciting as the nicest painted spinach I ever ate. I will not bring her. Besides, I can't ditch Anne. Well, but I'll dance with Venice. This afternoon, when she asked me if I've read any good books lately, well, I'll try and think of one. If only she wouldn't want to talk about what's in them. How am I supposed to know what's in a book? She never talks to me about books. Maybe even Venice is too smart to do that. Oh, boy, but... I think this still should be a little bit heavier. You see, I want these people to get acquainted. This coffee will make everybody too friendly right away, though. Well, nevertheless... Uh, I think I'll just go powder. Yes, miss. Hi, Venice. Hello, Lola. How are you? You're late. Donnie was wondering if you'd given his party to go by. That was sweet of him. It's a wonder. Come on, let's get a taste of this party's namesake. Who oh, are dear Lola? Oh, everybody. I'm terrified. Oh, Alex, how are you? Fine, dear. Alex, this is Venice Muir, Mr. Stevens. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, uh, oh Alex, I'm glad you're here. 
I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, fine. Just a moment, Anne. Uh, are you going to the Harvard game next Saturday? Why, yes, I, I think so. I'm awfully pleased to have met you. Will you pardon me? Oh, Venice, come on now. Let's have one of these here now cocktails. Lola. Venice, Donnie's in the kitchen. You know how fussy he is about his cocktails. Lola, who's the red-headed so-and-so all the men are rushing? And what about that bone you have to pick with me? Later. Oh, Anne Durier. Used to be Anne Park. Mm -hmm. I went to Eastover with her. Good family, but strange creature. What's the attraction? Well, she was always considered sort of bovine, you know? Mm -hmm. No one ever noticed her until about two years ago when her husband was mysteriously poisoned. Poisoned? Oh, how awful. They tried her for murder, but didn't prove it. So she discreetly mourned and then burst forth. You mean to say she's popular because she's suspected of murdering her husband? I suppose there's no other reason to account for it. Oh, Bill. Oh, hello, Laura. Here's your chance. Bill, you simply must know Venice Muir. This is Mr. Duval. Miss Muir, how do you do? How do you do? Pardon me? Where's she rushing? Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe she's gone to... Uh, uh. I'm awfully glad to have met you. You'll pardon me, won't you? Well, if you really must... Must know. <laughs> she rushed off to give me a chance to impress you. Were you uh, speaking to me? Oh, no, uh... Uh, I was humming. I mean, in a way I was humming, ex except that I was thinking at the same time. Mm, that's a bad sign. Very bad. How are you getting on? Fine, thank you. <laughs> Have you met Anne Durier? She's a wonderful girl. Why? Well, she's been through a devil of a lot, you know. Was falsely accused of murdering her husband. Did she tell you that? No, no, she never mentioned it. Well, what does she say? A very interesting conversationalist. Yes, I know, but what does she talk about? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, I... Oh, Lola, uh, wait a minute, I want to talk to you. Uh, able to drink the cocktail, thank you. Oh, is that all? Uh, able to drink two cocktails. And after that, what? Well, three. And then? Well, they're very strong. Oh, let me taste it. Doesn't taste too strong to me. <laughs> Say, have you met Anne Durier? Not yet. Is she attractive? Fascinating. Had lots of experience. Experience? She murdered her husband. What? I thought she was a prisoner. Oh, that's beside the point. Oh, uh, run along. I'll just go powder my nose. And your aide probably has a bone to pick with you. Oh, wouldn't you like to meet her? Well... Oh, come along. Come on. But I think that Hitchcock played the best game of the year. But I maintain the... Oh, Anne, are. this is Venice Muir, Mrs. Durier. How do you do? Close friend of Lola's. I'm pleased, Miss Muir. Thank you. I've wanted to meet you. Oh, and this is Mr. Brown. Mr. Andrews, Mr. Martin, Mr. Clay, Mr. Dubois. Oh, thank you. I've had the pleasure. Oh, and Mr. Stevens. I've met Miss Muir, thank and you. I'm glad you're here, Donnie. I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, well, uh, let's pick it over there under the piano. Very well. May I offer you a fresh cocktail? Uh, thanks. Uh, have any of you read any good books lately? Are there any? Oh, yes. I've just finished reading the most fascinating biography on Noguchi. And if you've read Paul de Creef's micro pundits, you'll just love this one about... Would you pardon me, please? Jerry, look, Venice, hmm? at the mantelpiece. Don't stare. Pardon me, Miss Muir. I must be going. Oh, yes. Good afternoon, Miss Muir. Isn't that marvelous? Well, what? There were some men there. Yeah, before she learned to speak French, she was shunned by men. Now look at her. Oh, you make me sick. Besides, she does speak perfect French. Yeah, that's the trouble. No one else does. Venice. Hi, Lola. Having had my usual success, I think I'd better go home. Well, please don't hurry. No, I'm not. I should have been there long ago. Oh, I wish you wouldn't go. Night, darling. See you later. I guess I'm too pure. Nothing I can do about that. I wonder. 
you have to poison your husband, or would just anyone do? No. I could never poison Donnie. Flowers arrived, Miss Bennett. Thank you, Nora. I'm leaving now, dear. Papa? Aida. Oh, it's a lovely corsage. Who sent it? Miss Venice Muir to Miss Venice Muir, as usual. Don't you feel well, dear? Oh, I feel all right. You don't look it. What's the matter? Oh, I don't know. Same old thing. Why do I have to go out? I have to have a good time and... Oh, I don't know anything else. But why, dear? Why shouldn't you have a good time? You're pretty. You have pretty clothes. Your father and your mother were from the finest families in New York. Yes. Might have been better if mother had been a famous bareback rider and father a pool shark. Venice. Oh, I didn't mean that, of course. They were sweet. What is a pool shark? I don't know. But I do know that it isn't your um, family tree that impresses young men when they're dancing with you. Well, dear, what, what does impress young men nowadays? If I knew the answer to that, darling, I wouldn't be sitting here all wrapped up in gloom. <laughs> oh, nonsense. Come along, dear dress. You're going to be late. You must cultivate small talk, vivacity. It isn't natural for me, Aunt Emma. Small talk, vivacity. In fact, any of the other social graces as far as young men are concerned. Then affect them. Dolly Wainwright isn't taking you tonight? No. He's smitten with a new lady. Is she charming? Oh, Betty. She may have poisoned her husband, and she picks bones. Venice, dear, I don't understand you. Good night. Dress carefully. Just arrived a while ago. Who do you come with? Um, a new one. Anybody I know? Don't think so. Give us a look at him. Be a pleasure. Hello, Take Venice. the same old reason, I suppose. Well, that wouldn't excuse you for bossing at my party. Besides, I've got two nice bowls for you tonight. Jack, I want you to know Venice Muir. Venice, this is Mrs. Spaulding. How do you do? Well, I'm all right now that I'm here. Oh. I almost didn't come. Well, that would have been too bad. Well, let's not talk about it. All right, let's not. Dance beautifully. Thank you. You dance beautifully. Thank you. One of my lesser charms, lady. Um, do you like to read? Not while dancing. Well, of course, I, I didn't mean that. Yeah, I like reading in bed. Oh, pardon. Don't mention it. Uh, would you mind dancing over to the card room? I promised to play a rubber bridge with Mr. Partridge. Certainly. That's right. Venice, I believe you and I could trim the world tonight. You could. Mm -hmm. Nonsense. He overbid his hand time and again. More later. Miss Muir, could you stand one short dance with an octogenarian? No, but I should love a long one with you, Mr. Parker. 
I think you're the sweetest young lady in New York. Oh, to be young again. Why, Mr. Partridge? I believe you're leading me on. No, you're too good a friend to lead to destruction. Great. <laughs> Hello, Andra. Hello, darling. All the pleasure of dancing with a lovely young lady and none of the hazards. Oh, Mr. Partridge, you can be a little hazardous. Hi, Donnie. Yeah? Who is that girl? Which one? Oh, the one, one in white over there, wasting that gorgeous smile on old man Partridge. Oh, that's Venice Muir. Well, I'm cutting in. Go ahead, she's a nice girl. She's the nicest girl I know. Old Partridge is a lawyer, you know, trustee of our estate. Says he used to take her over his knee and spank her, etc. Huh. Well, he can be your lawyer or trustee. I'll uh, take the etc. I won't in that bed. Well, I don't see why. Of because... course you don't. Oh, come on, Anne. No. Hello, Donnie. Hello, Lola. What's the matter with you? I'm sad. You look it. Well, I am. You know, you're a fool. Yes, I'm a fool. Are you leaving with Anne Durier? No. Good. Not a complete fool, then. No. Yes. Why don't you take Venice home? Oh, she's too gloomy. Oh, she is not. You make me ill. Why, Venice is the sweetest girl here. Yeah. She has a positively beautiful sense of humor. And underneath, why, she's really warm and vibrant, and mysterious. Venice? Yes, Venice. And she isn't shop -worn. But of course, with your blunted sense of values, that wouldn't make any difference. Hey! Someday a man with a nose for adventure is going to come along and, and, and discover Venice. And you can just bet that he'll have the most exciting time of any man in New York. Then I suppose you'll come and cry on my shoulder. Well, my shoulder will be padded with pins. Hey, does Venice like me? She doesn't dislike you. And that's a great deal for Venice. Well, no one can say that I haven't got a nose for adventure. Where is she? Well, if it isn't little Venice Muir. Hi, Donnie. Well, what on earth are you doing out here? Thinking. Thinking? Seems to me you do an awful lot of thinking. Well, you see, no one pays much attention to me. I have lots of time for it. I believe you're the only honest woman in circulation. <laughs> you're not Diogenes by any chance. Yes, that's who I am. Where's your lantern? There you have me. <laughs> Dennis, why are you so shy? Do you think I am? Yeah. No, it's... Well, I just like to be alone, that's all. Hey, you can't get rid of me that way. What's the matter? Something wrong? Oh, nothing yet. It all depends on you. You know, you're the most wonderful girl in all New York. Oh, now, Donnie, I dare say you've had enough practice, so, so let's talk about something else. Well, won't you even listen to me? No, I, I love your sense of humor, but don't use it just now. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll be serious. You're beautiful. And underneath, you're... you're warm. Vibrant. Mysterious. Donnie, what are you saying? Only that I've got a nose for adventure, and I've discovered you. Uh, have you been... been drinking? 
Only enough to give me courage to tell you what's in my heart. Oh, darling. Well, don't you even, don't you even like me a little? Like you? Like you? Please, why not? It's too late. But, Donnie, I do love you so much. And I love you so much. Oh, Jean, I've got a sail tomorrow, Venice. Well, you'll only be gone a few weeks. Hey, come on, sail with me. Oh, I can't. Yeah, the trip would do you good. Anyhow, it would do me good. Oh, I couldn't. But why not? What's to prevent you? Don't you want to get some clothes to marry me? It's only a little ride on a boat. What's to keep you here? Oh, everything. Well, what? Nothing. Couldn't I come in for just a little while? Oh, no, Donnie, it's so late, and I'll bet I'm a sight. But, darling, I will sail tomorrow. You are exciting. Are you sure? Never more sure of anything in my life. Spent months figuring it out. Well, you seem so sort of, well... And you were so shy. Well, everything's all right now, isn't it? What do you say we get married in Paris? I'd rather it was here. All right. Anything you say. <laughs> You're sweet. Good night, darling. Bless you. Please. Take the stairway to the next deck. Thank you. No, I think I'll stay here. If you should happen to see Mr. Wainwright, will you tell him I'm here? Yes, Miss. Glad you came down. I wanted to apologize about last night. I must have been an awful mess. You were a brick about it. Hello, oh, hello, Donnie. Hello, Anne. Hello. You know Miss Muir? Yes, how do you do? Hello. Mighty glad you oh, came down. Oh, don't worry, Well, I think I'll just, uh... Oh, there's no hurry, uh, Dennis. Nola may be down. Well, I have to hurry. Donnie, here's a little memento of what might have been. Well, bon voyage. Goodbye, Dennis. Bye. So long. I'm glad you understood about last night, Venice. That's all right, Donnie. You were... you were cute. <laughs> I'll bet I was. <laughs> Why, it's a key. Yes, it, it seems to be a key. Say, I gotta get my things off this boat. Call you up next week. Maybe we can have lunch together. That'll be sweet. Just a little ride on a boat. And Miss Muir, you certainly are marvelous. And underneath your warm, vibrant, mysterious. Is it possible, Mademoiselle, expecting someone? Uh, yes. Uh, a, a large orangutan. And for just a moment, I thought you were it. Is it possible you're an American? Yes, and so are you. Say a few words, will you? I'm tired of hearing French all day. 
Well, well, what'll I say? Oh, it really doesn't matter. Just say anything. I don't expect it to be very interesting. No? Why, please? Well, you look like a good girl. Oh, do I? You are a good girl, aren't you? Yes, I... I'm afraid that that may be my trouble. <laughs> what are you drinking? Champagne cocktail. Wow, you must have money in the bank. You go around talking to yourself? Well, people with money in the bank generally do. <laughs> Why... Why, yes, I, I talk to myself a little. I even hum to myself. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> oh, waiter. Oui, monsieur. A champagne cocktail and a beer. Oui, monsieur. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> well, must be 20 minutes of something or other. <laughs> <laughs> or 20 minutes fast. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, it is 20 minutes of four. <laughs> Uh, are you over here on a holiday? Oh, no, no. I, I came over to take a job they didn't hold for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I stayed on until I was broke. That was several months ago. Well, then, uh, how do oh, you... Oh, you mean the drinks? Oh, you're paying for those. You don't mind, do you? Uh, of course not. And I had a couple of beers over there, too. Oh. That's why it was so funny when you thanked me for them. <laughs> is, is that the reason you spoke to me? Well, that, that's one reason. But aside from that, I'm, I'm awfully glad I did. You seem to be a, a swell girl. I don't even mind you being a good girl. That's how much I like you. <laughs> well, um, will you take this to pay the waiter? Oh, no, no, pay him yourself. I'm not proud. Oh, hello, Johnny. Hello, guy. Merci, madame. Well, I guess I'll be running along. I've enjoyed meeting you. Mutual. Goodbye. So long. Hello, Manuel. Wait. Wait a minute. I, I want to talk to you. Uh, let's sit down here. Uh, are you really broke? Flat. Would you like to earn some money? Well, I'll do anything short of murder. Well, would you work for me? Well, sure, why not? Well, I know this is a, a funny thing to ask anyone, but I was wondering, could you be a sort of, well, a sort of a gigolo? Why, oh, I, I guess I could be uh, any kind of a gigolo. And sound in wind and limb, just a Wilmington, Delaware boy who didn't make good in the big city. Oh, bonjour, guy. Oh, hello, Renny. Ça va? Uh, how have you been? Uh, fine. Well, I'll, I'll call you up sometime. Oh, merci. Au revoir. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, Renny, uh, Renny, um, I never can think of his last name. Oh, yes, Renny, Renny Tenardier. A vicomte, by the way. You know a lot of people in Paris, don't you? Oh, yes, I got to know quite a few while I was struggling to throw my money away. When it was gone, I had to move over to the left bank and hibernate. Rennie's the first one I've seen in, oh, about two months. I guess I'll have to tell him I've been to Monte Carlo. Well, that's better than telling him I've been in Huck. <laughs> well, do you think um, 2,500 francs a week and expense money would keep you out of Huck? It will do. <laughs> it is settled. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Uh, what am I supposed to do to earn this money? Well, that's a little awkward to explain. Oh, I'll understand. I read what every young man should know. I haven't. I'm from New York. My family are... Well, they're all right, but I'm a social flop. Flop? Mm-hmm. Haven't any bows, and I don't see any prospects of getting any. No? No, and I thought, well, if you could take me around, and I didn't have defense with you, and you could introduce me to some men I didn't know, and you might even get me into some sort of set. Do you think that would be possible? I think it might. I, I think anything might be possible with you. <laughs> oh, uh, Nora, my corsage. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, isn't there a card? Card? Yes. I can't imagine who these can be from. Thank you. 
Oh, uh, Nora, I'm expecting Mr. Bryson. Yes, ma'am. That was thoughtful of him. I've simply got to stop talking to myself. I talk so much to myself, I'm all worn out when I meet people. Well, well, well. Fancy seeing you. I don't remember you, sir. Come to think of it, I don't remember you either. Oh, but don't despair. I'll be around often, and then as I enter, I'll say, fancy seeing you again. Well, that, that will be simpler, Mr. Bryson. Oh, Miss Venice is expecting you, sir. Oh, thank you. No, I bring my bag, please. Venice, you're swell. Thank you, sir. Venice Muir. What a lovely name for the most popular girl in Paris. How did you get it? I'm not the most popular girl anywhere. And I'm called Venice because my mother and father spent their honeymoon in Venice. How romantic. Yes. Lucky for me, they didn't spend it in Brussels. Brussels Muir, wouldn't that be pretty? <laughs> but don't worry. Brussels or no Brussels, you'll be popular. I spent an hour at the Ritz bar after I left you, and oh, lady, lady, when I left there, a lot of the fellas thought you were simply wonderful. Well, you had everything. Even a very, uh, a very slight past. Past? Oh, well, nothing you could put your finger on, but a lot of the boys will try. Oh, I'll die. I couldn't live up to the past of a midget. You don't know midgets. Now, I heard of a midget who broke up the home of a heavyweight champ once What'd you say about me? Oh, nothing definite except that uh, my life would be ruined unless you married me. And there's a funny side to that, too. I'll tell you about it someday. Oh, thank you, Nora. Good night. Good night. This is the expense money. When it runs out, let me know. You certainly are trusting. I'm careless, shiftless, and extravagant. Well, don't be any more. You're not afraid of being gypped? No, I'm not afraid. Thank you. We're bound to meet some fellows here. Oh, guy, I'm scared. Oh, come along. So was Eve, and look what a mess she made of Adam. Oh, I know, but I don't want to make a mess of anyone. I know my pets. They never want to. Come along. Suppose we have a cocktail and order later. All right, I'll have a um, champagne cocktail. Two. Good, monsieur. Oh, I think this is the most romantic place. <laughs> have you ever been in love? Mm, no. Have you? Oh, yes, yeah, several times. It's grand. Only you suddenly discover it's, uh, whatchamacallit, it, it's bubble-like quality after you've held it in your hand too long. Perhaps you held it too roughly. There you go, thinking again. I'll stop it at once, I promise. Good gal. <laughs> well, there's a fellow over there I want you to meet, sitting at the center table. I have an idea that he's anxious to meet you, too. No. Oh, Guy, I'm getting scared again. Courage, my pet. Courage. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, uh, Come on. Quick. Pretend you're interested in me. Say something, anything, but say it with feeling. Well, uh, what will I say? Uh, how much is two times two? Four. Dobry wieczór. Aleksandra Fedorowna, jak wasze zdrowie? Jak wy, Piotr Piotrowicz? Jesteście widzicie Jak wyglądali wam wczoraj wieczór? Eight times eight. Uh, Sixty-four. Oh, you're wonderful. Ten. Uh, oh, ja to był. And a girl. And sixteen times sixteen. I wish I knew. I'll teach you, my pet. What's uh, oh, that guy? Rennie. Uh, Miss Muir, may I present La Vicomte de la Thénardier de Maine? He never remembers it. <laughs> Charles, mademoiselle. Rennie, Miss Muir's an American. You've always had a passion for Americans. Oh, oh only a beautiful American. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Merci. You have a 
cocktail with us, won't you, Rico? Certainly. Would it be good for you, Annie? Try. Oh, very good. Especially after Miss Muir danced with me. Will you uh, do me this honor? I'd love to. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Fine. Say, you have a beautiful... How's your sister? Fine, thank you. What a Say, uh, who was that girl you were out last night? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Say, you have a beautiful girl with you, guy. Yes, but uh, she doesn't speak Spanish. She don't have to say a word. Well, if you insist, but I warn you, she's deaf to Argentine. <laughs> Why, they go out of their minds about her. Listen. I tell you, they go out of their minds about her. I would go out of anything for her. Good. Going out of your mind wouldn't be much of a sacrifice. What's this? Oh, nothing, nothing. I say, stop at our table on your way out. And remember, she has no twin sister, so don't ask that one. She's tired of hearing it. Thanks. You'll have a coffee with us, Mr. Merci. Le même, s'il vous plaît. Oui, monsieur. Well, how was it? Her damn thing is just as beautiful as her golden hair. I'm not so sure that that's a compliment. Hey, your hair is beautiful. Like a spun gold, like a fonce on a côte d'or, like uh... Like straw. What is straw? Pie. <laughs> oh, mais <no. laughs> Now, Venice, dance with me. We hardly started. Yes, we were just forgetting. Well, some other time be gone. Uh, tonight? Well, um... Well, uh... Perhaps. Well, we're going to the bicycle races in a few minutes. Why? Because Venice loves them. Oh. There's always a chance somebody will crack their skull. to leave my pet. He's watching us, trying to find out why I'm mad about you. And he'll continue trying to find out. I know men like that. Oh, Guy, you're so clever. How is it possible for one human being to know so much? I should know. I had two wives. Got out from under me. Oh. I say that Owen with more feeling. Oh. That's better. Now we really going to the bicycle racing? Je ne sais pas. Go powder your nose. Why? Is it shiny? Yes. No, but powder it anyway. You are leaving us? Well, Guy says my nose is shiny. But no, it isn't. Uh, well, perhaps I'd better powder it anyway. Certainly. Uh, won't you sit down, Rennie? Let's see. She's nice, Guy. Seems very young, though. Mm, yes, she only has one fault. She's filthy rich. One of the richest women in the world. What a pity. Isn't it, though? Let's go on a crying drunk. No, no, I can't tonight. I've got to go to the bicycle races. Oh, I might see you there. Hello, guy. Hello, Sadie. Hello, Hello Renee. Hello, sit down. Thank you. But where's the charming lady? Oh, she... she went to see a man about a horse. Oh, a polo pony? Oh, let's forget I mentioned it, huh? <laughs> Renny, what do you think about the bicycle races? Bicycle races are idiotic. What's so idiotic about them? They don't get anywhere. I suppose polo players do. Certainly, to the goalpost. Well, bicycle races get to the finish. The finish is the start. Well, nevertheless, we're going to the bicycle races. 
Well, I shall leave now. I uh, stop at the station. Oh. oh. <laughs> Miss Muir, may I present uh, Senor Santiago's? I'm eager to meet you. He means eager. Well, you have, and your eagerness is still with you. And why not? I shall join my party. Hope to see you at the race. If not, may I call? Indeed, yes. I'm stopping at the Louis Le Grand. To you, Pencil. Oh, don't mention it. Uh, great love, I wouldn't have to write it down. Louise Le Grand. I know what you're writing. Don't tell me. Oh, God, your manners are atrocious. Well, even with that vast help, I haven't done so well. Until recently, my love. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir. Adieu, guy. Adieu. 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 Adios. May I have the honor of dancing with mademoiselle? I'd be happy to. Happy to. Hey, uh, w when do we eat? Food? Oh, no, 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 I never eat food, you know? Para todas estas personas, esto es meramente el principio de un baile. Es más, es mucho más. I'm sorry, I don't understand Spanish. But no other language will say what I'm saying. That's comforting. You see, uh, I just think. No words would do in any language to what I have to say. Beautiful. Then we can both talk at once. Are you thinking? Yes. Yo tengo una bien lista. Podríamos ser tú y yo muy felices. Exquisita rubia. Thank you, monsieur. Oh, you're limping. Did you step on your feet? Senor Santiago dances beautifully. Gracias. Another? Well, uh, We're off to the races. Perhaps I see you there. Perhaps, perhaps not. I hope so. Uh, perhaps. Yes. Goodbye. Mm. Adios. I hope we don't meet any more men in here, Guy. My ankle won't stand us. I'm sorry, Venice. Couldn't you find somewhere else to kick me for a change? Well, I could, but it wouldn't be refined. Guy. Hello, Guy. Oh, hello, Carl. Uh, Miss Muir, Mr. Howe. How do you, How do, you do? do? You did come out into the night air. How come? Guy, I'm hungry. Uh, give the lady some champagne too. Come on, Monsieur. A champagne without bitters or sugar. Oui, mm, you're gonna love this soup. <laughs> what do you have, Carl? I have soup. Uh, give us two more. <laughs> Say, I've been dying to meet you. Me? Yes. I've heard a lot about you from Guy. Oh, I'm sure Guy was only amusing himself. You know, he's really very. Very irresponsible. Yes, but uh, very accurate. I'll swear that. Where's he been hiding you? Uh, in my overcoat pocket. And I always sleep in my overcoat. Guy, the champagne soup's delicious, but what about our next course? Well, I know a bar where they have potato chips for your next glass of bouillon. Mm. Of course you do. I told you about it. Well, I like, um... Oh, no, we're going to bicycle races, aren't we? Well, they only started tonight. You have all week to get there. May need it. <laughs> been over long, Miss Muir? About three weeks. Where are you stopping? The Louis Le Grand. Right across from my hotel. <laughs> Splendid. Mm, a pencil? Uh, no, thanks. I'll remember it. Come along, Venice. We gotta get going. Well? I haven't finished my champagne soup. May see you later, huh? Hi. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Come on, there's plenty more at the next place. All right. Hey, that fellow's one of the greatest chasers in Paris. If he chases you, you're made. What? Sure. If you haven't a reputation, why, he'll help get you one. And if you have one, why, you'll lose it. Well, I never heard of it. The man. Are we really going to the races? I don't know, but we certainly have assured the races of an audience. They ought to give you a percentage. Guy, do you think all those men really like me? Certainly. Rennie in particular. He's got to marry an heiress or starve or go to work. He'll dance attendance, never worry. Oh, that'll be off. No, if it ain't. Swell. <laughs> Say, uh, when does this Donnie arrive in Paris? About now, I think. He's got to come over on business. You won't mind seeing him fight his way through the crowd to have a word with you? No, not if there's a chance he'll be trampled to death. <laughs> <laughs> Good gal. You're going to get along all right. Well, I don't know. Even if I did, I... Well, I, I don't think I ever could... What? Well, could... Could ever stand getting married. I'd be embarrassed to death. Oh, no, you won't, Venice. If I wish things were different, I might marry you and show you how beautiful it could be. I almost forgot we were going to that place with the potato chips. Mm -hmm. oh. Mm -hmm. 
Gigolo. Where do you get the idea you say goodnight to Gigolo? Why, what do you mean? Oh, don't act so dumb. Guy! Guy, you can't go in there. That's my bedroom. My dear lady, where do you expect a Gigolo to go this time of the morning? Oh! Oh, get up. You'll get... I'll get to heaven. Maybe, but with housemaid's knee. Get up. I hate to see a woman on her knees unless she's scrubbing. Oh, please go. Like this? Well, put on your clothes. Can't. Throw them out of the window. Please. Come along. Come along. I want to give you a practical lesson in what used to be called sin. Oh, Donnie. Come on. Donnie, save me. I'm Come here, on. darling. <sighs> so do I have to stop and throw that dog out? Donnie, kill him. It would be a pleasure. Well, I'll get you for that. Oh. That's the way you came in? Come along. No! 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 What's the matter, Venice? What's happened? Oh, oh, something awful. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, Madame, c'est très bon, c'est comme un côté, Madame. C'est très le dîner. Mon sang! C'est l'Américain! Good night, Venice. You are swell. Everything's gonna work out all right. Thanks. You're a perfect gigolo. I almost feel like kissing you. What could I do? I'd have to stand it. You're horrid. Good night. Good night. Hello? No, Miss Muir is not in. I don't mind lying to these foreigners. That's convenient. Yes, but they're not all foreigners. Well, tonight, nice last night at the bicycle, bicycle races. races. <laughs> what comes out of a chimney? Santa Claus. Then your wish and my wish will never be broke. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I see. It's Mr. Wainwright, miss. Oh, it's Johnny. What'll I do? Oh, well, talk to him. Hello? Johnny, Venice. Johnny Wainwright. Hello, Johnny. Nice to hear your voice, too. Don't lie too much. That isn't a lie. What? Oh, uh, I'd like to see you sometime. Oh, uh, I'm sailing a week from tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, don't tell too much truth. Just a minute, please. He's leaving a week from tomorrow. Good. But I want to see him once. Well, and invite him to Rennie's party. Should I? Sure. Hello, Donnie. Would you like to go to a party with me a week from tonight? Well, uh, well that'd be great. All right. Goodbye. Funny that dame's busy all the time. Well, what's the difference? Well, I promised Lola on a stack of Bibles I'd take Venice out at least a couple of times while I was in Paris. Yeah? If I go home and say I haven't even seen her, she'll never forgive me. Week from tonight, probably with a bunch of old fogies. Well, don't try to stick me with her. 
Oh. Gee, I wish I could get out of this. I'd probably be bored to death. Why don't you tell her you're drunk? Hello? It's Mr. Wainwright, miss. Hello? Hello, Donnie. Come on up. Yes, I've almost finished dressing. I'd like to have a quiet little talk before we start. Okay, be right up. It's on all right. We start with a nice, quiet little talk. After that, I suppose, just quiet. Yeah, you need a rest. Well, maybe. See you about 12, sooner if I can get away. Okay. Well, I still think the bicycle races are more interesting than the polo matches. In the bicycle races, they have no horses. Oh, I'm sorry, I brought it up. How about service, monsieur? Monsieur. Hello, Nora. Right. Miss Venice will be in in a moment. Thank you. Oh, good evening. I'm Guy Bryson. You are... Uh, Wainwright, Donald Wainwright. Oh, uh, Santiago's? How? Mr. Wainwright. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Cocktail? Oh, yes, thanks. See, what do you make of this grand brawl Rennie's pulling off for Venice? Oh, my guess is it's a pretty picture he's painting for her. You see, my love, you'll be the chatelaine of all you survey if you marry me. Do you think she will? I hope not. I don't know. He's supposed to be a pretty good bit. And a title, Vicontesse. Plenty of women would go for that. However, I suppose Rennie hasn't much of a chance while I'm around. Just the same, I have never liked him as competition, Guy. Well, the trouble with you Argentines is lack of confidence. That's why you lost the war. What war? I don't know, any war. <clears throat> what war were you in? Uh, another cocktail, Mr. Cartwright? <laughs> Wainwright, thanks. I'm sorry. Living here this place, Paris? No, just here on a on business trip. Sailing tomorrow. Good, good. I, I mean, I'm, I, I hope you have a pleasant crossing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ah, you look charming. You're prompt Thank this you. evening, my pet. Didn't I dress carefully? You are divine, perfectamente. Where do these Spanish learn all these pretty speeches? But I'm not Spanish, I oh, am... Oh, uh, Jupiter, we have to go through all Venice. that again. Hello, Donnie, how are you? I'm just fine, thanks, Venice. Uh, try these. Have you met Mr. Bryson, Mr. Wainwright? Oh, yes, he's met me. You are a capable person. <laughs> these <laughs> men who are so capable of unimportant details, they are generally lacking... I know the answer to that one, too. Venice? I will teach you Spanish, yes? I'm afraid that Guy will break right into the middle of your speeches just the same. Venice, I, uh, what about that little talk? Hey, how about getting started? I'm ready. Just mm -hmm. a moment for my wrap. Nora? Yes, miss. Thank you. Let's see how many are there. Well, without a doubt, I've got the biggest heart and the thinnest overcoat in the crowd, so I suppose I'll have to sit up front with the chauffeur. <laughs> uh, oh, no, you have, uh, you have a cold. You can't. Well, uh, Carl might. Uh, well, no, Carl has a cold, too. He can't. It will kill me, but I would gladly do it for you. Uh, oh, no, South Americans can't stand the night air. All right, I'm healthy. Would you mind, Donnie? No. You'll pardon me if I shut this window, won't you? We might get cold back here. to welcome any friend of New York, unless the friend wished her to return to New York. To tell the truth, Vicon, New York's pretty lonely without her. You had me tell me that. Don't you believe a word he says, Benny? He didn't even know I'd left. I bet it. Don't you remember? I was down to... Well, I was at the boat when you sailed. Oh, were you? Yes. That's right. Let's go somewhere and talk. All right. Well, Benny, she won't forget the next dance is ours. No, I won't. Well, I guess the only place I could talk to you would be while you're taking a bath. I'll take a bath here. And you're sailing in the morning. Oh, quit kidding, will you? I've got to talk to you. I wouldn't kid you, Donnie. No, I don't know how. Oh, no. Hey, you've got lovely hair. Where did you get it? I've had it for years. I bet you want to talk to me. I do, alone. Oh, uh, Venice. Venice, this is our dance. Your partner. 
Maybe we'll be seated together at dinner, Dottie. I forgot. I say that thanks to the League of Nations now, there will not now be a big... Merci, René. Oh, you promised me the sun today. Will you excuse us? Oh, excuse me, will you? I've got to talk to somebody on the radio table. Hello, Vera. Hello. I was wishing to stand here to get out of here so I could talk to you. Hey, Donnie, what are you doing here? Oh, just taking a little walk. Hello, Donnie. Having a nice time? Yes, thanks. The next is ours. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Will you excuse me? Mm-hmm. First, what do you say we go out for a walk, have a talk? Oh, well, hello, Venice. Where are you straying to? Out into the garden. Well, that's great. I need some fresh air myself. Come along, Wainwright. Thanks. Oh, this tango was to have been ours. So it was. Will you excuse this guy? Certainly. I thought you wanted to talk to me. Well, I do. Oh, gee, I never could do this accursed tango, much less talk at the same time. Never mind. I can't dance it very well either. You're a liar. You always dance beautifully. What's happened to you? Nothing. Did you even drive to the station with me? No, I couldn't. Why? Oh, I don't know. I just couldn't. You have a brilliant party, Rene. Do you think Miss Muir is impressed? I hope so. You know, she really has money. I made sure of that. She seems a charming girl. Oh, darling, you must marry her. You must. I know. Rene. Rene, you won't ever fall in love with her. Of course not, darling. It's terrible to need money. I'm so sorry I have to ask you to return it, Rene. But if I don't put it back, my husband will find out. I know, dear. But I should really like to go to the station with him, Guy. Well, I know, but... But I... Uh, listen to his tale of woe, but don't get in his carriage. <laughs> I shall be very coy. Well, that's a rough idea of the effect I wish. Thank you, Pygmalion. Not Pygmalion. He fell in love with a wooden girl. She wasn't wooden. She was marble. No, she wasn't. Yes, she was. She wasn't. She was. She wasn't. She was. Oh, was she? Oh, silly. <laughs> well, Rennie, is there no escape from you? No, Rennie. You seem uh, elusive to marriage, Venice. Only tonight, Venice? Why, you brazen thing. Well, I've got to see a man about an upside-down drink. Au revoir. Let's go on to Dallas, Venice. It's rather hot here, isn't it? All right. You seem unusually gay tonight, Venice, and rightly so. It's a lovely party. Only because of you. For me. Oh, yeah. Hello, Spaulding. This is Wainwright. Have them take my things down to the boat train, will you? Oh, I'm sorry, I won't have time. Okay, thanks. What's the matter, honey? A few moments ago, you seemed gay. Something worrying you? Uh, no, I'm merely serious. Oh. Venice, do you love Guy? No. Uh, he loves you. No. A boy and a girl inseparable. They do not love. There's nothing strange about that. <laughs> I cannot understand American women. Perhaps there's a reason I'm so in love with them. We must keep you pretty busy, Rene. There are at least 50 million of us. <laughs> oh, men, no. <laughs> oh, I think this is quite the loveliest place I've ever seen. Mm. It's an empty setting. It needs a jewel. I hope she'll be very lovely when you find her. She is more than lovely. Venice, will you do me the honor to marry me? Rene. Venice. Oh, I, I can't. Why? I, I don't love you. I could teach you that. No, I, I'm not that way, Rene. Oh, please, Venice, please. Oh, believe me, Rene, I'm honored, but, but it's impossible. I'm sorry. 
I'm very sad. Don't be. Please don't. Perhaps tomorrow, no. Uh, tonight, I cannot help it. Uh, you go now in Venice. I'll follow. like a shot. Well, I hardly dare hope, but maybe somebody has murdered your friend Guy Bryson. Oh, darling. I've got something to tell you. It's very hard to say. It. Oh, well, say it. When are you coming home? Pretty soon. Why not come with me now? Are you serious? Never more serious in my life. Sober? As a judge. Well, uh, what about Anne Gillian? Oh, I was a fool, I know that. The moment I saw you last night, I knew it. You liked me before you came over here, didn't you? I don't think that that's a very diplomatic question. All right, I'll withdraw it. No, I'll answer it. I did like you, Donnie. Terribly. Well, don't you now? Well... I don't know. Wait till I get home. I'll wait. You better get aboard. Promise to hurry home and marry me? It's possible that you're proposing to me again? Yes, I am. Won't you answer me? Uh, uh get on. Well, Venice. I'll hurry home. Well, cable me. Yes, I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm glad I found you, Venice. Rennie shot himself just after you left. Rennie? Yes. I, I wanted to get to you before the reporters did. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but Miss Muir can't possibly see you. Well, naturally, she's frustrated. But she's asked me, however, to keep her name out of this mess if it's humanly possible. Uh, pardon, monsieur. Do you mind if I use the telephone, please? Oh, certainly not. Go ahead. Thank you. But uh, you're not calling New York. Mais non, I'm calling the newspaper. All right. Well, you can see for yourself how embarrassing it would be for Miss Muir to have her name under one of those headlines reading, uh, Vicon kills self for unrequited love of beautiful American girl. Well, it would be terrible. Well, we could shorten the headlines. That would be a help. Well, you wouldn't use headlines like that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hasn't Miss Muir a statement of some sort? Well, no, she hasn't. But she couldn't help it if she didn't love him. Could she? Well, that's a lead. Could she? Well, you boys will do everything you possibly can, won't you? Oh, sure. sure. That's sure. great. Now, come on, let's have a little drink for you. Yeah, I'll fresh you. The light here. All right. Here we are. Here we are. No, it isn't. It's fine. Dandy. Guy. Rennie was a charming person, even though he was a fortune hunter. If I were Rennie, I'd rather have the paper say I died for love of you than because I was bankrupt and owed money to a married woman and all the whole sordid mess he was in. Rennie was a glamorous fellow. Now, you should be grateful his death leaves glamorous memories of him. You said you wanted to be an interesting lady. I want to forget all about it. Not a chance. I want to go home. And have a good cry, huh? Well, I'll take care of the errands. <laughs> Don't let more than one man fall in love with you on the way over. And remember, you're very easy to fall in love with if you really give a man a chance to know you. Key to your stateroom, Miss Muir. Thank and you. don't throw away your red flannel underwear the minute I get off this boat. By the way, I'd better get off this boat. Goodbye, Venice. Guy. Hmm? Sail with me. No. I'll throw away my red flannel underwear if you don't. Oh, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. And then I'd catch my desert boat and you'd be sorry. Hey, stop, will you? You're, you're going to make me cry. Goodbye, my pet. Die! Goodbye. Die, wait! 
What? <laughs> Guy, please stay with me. No. I'm afraid. Afraid of what? You're going home to your Donnie. And incidentally, I'd, I'd make him do something about that name. Oh, no, fooling guy. Please sail with me. No. Yes. No. Please. No. Please. Oh, well. All right, I will. Right. Have you got an extra shade along? Yes, lots. Come on. <laughs> Stand back now, boys. Right this way, Mr. Muir, please. Mr. Muir. Mr. Muir, will you give us a statement? How do you feel about Mrs. Bryson's suit for alienation of affection? She's worth a quarter of a million. Dear. What's that? Are you Guy Bryson? I am. You feel you're worth a quarter of a million to Mrs. Bryson? Guy, what does he mean? Mrs. Guy Bryson filed suit in Superior Court this morning for $250,000 for alienation of affection. Who alienated what? Why, well, Miss Bryson's doing Miss Muir. Why, that... Guy, Mr. Guy, please. Who are your lawyers, Miss Muir? Please, please, just a moment. Give us a chance to talk this over. Mr. Bryson will give you a statement later. Come on, Guy. Guy, are you married? In a way. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, I never thought of it. Uh, didn't want to think of it. We'll think. Well, there's only one more. You won't find anything in that one either. You can run along now, Guy. I'll be all right. Don't worry, Benny. I'll take care of the suit. It'll be a pleasure having two suits. Not for me. No, Mr. Bryson, you will come to my party tonight? Well, I... Uh, yes, thank you very much. Pleasant meeting you. Thank you. Goodbye, my pet. Goodbye. Goodbye, old man. So long. Glad I met you. You certainly have him well trained. Yes, haven't I? How's Jerry? Oh, our engagement's to be announced tonight. Hmm. You ought to be the maid of honor. Good. Donnie the best man. Betty Jane, Helen... How is Donnie? All right. He said you cabled him. Mm -hmm. I telephoned him this morning. I couldn't make the boat. Oh. Of course, he'll call you later. Miss Phyllis, have you the other key? Oh, yes. Hello? Just a minute, please. I see. Miss Muir on telephone. Well, tell her I'm out. Hello? He say he not home. No, you fool! Oh, thank you. Mr. Bryson's waiting on the other phone, miss. Thank you, Nora. Hello, Guy. I've just been reading the papers. Isn't it terrible? Uh, don't worry about them, Venice. It'll be all right. Please take my word for it. Take your word? <laughs> I feel sorry for that, as if she took your word for anything. Take your word? Who are you flattering? Yourself. <laughs> she didn't take your word. She took you. Uh, just a minute. Will you keep quiet a moment? Just one moment, and then you can yell at me for the rest of my life. Why, you ungrateful, oh, sadistic, fiendish... Oh, please, fiendish. darling, you insisted I call Venice. Won't oh, you keep quiet? Venice. How could a girl get a name like Venice? Well, her father and mother spent their honeymoon in Venice, that's how. Uh, uh, Venice, uh, Mrs. Bryson has agreed to withdraw the suit. Yes, she's a darling. Uh, so don't worry, that's a nice girl. Oh, so she's a nice girl now, is she? Uh, she's a good son... Now, listen, if you. If you think I'm going to swallow any Do we any stay together or do we not? Abuse. Abuse. Just five minutes after I've forgiven you your... Will you, you step your... in the next room while I finish this phone conversation? What are you going to say to us? Simply goodbye. All right. I don't want to listen anyhow. It nauseates me. But don't lie to me. Oh, I've never lied to you. Well, at least I've never caught you. If you'd wash your hair, you wouldn't have to scrub that brush. Oh, hello, Venice. I'm sorry, I was interrupted. What? Oh, yes, I'm leaving. I'm leaving with my wife for California. Yes, I, I love her very much, and I'll be okay. And so will you. They can't stop you now. Just be yourself. All right. Well, goodbye, Venice. Oh, oh uh, Venice, by the way, uh, will you tell your friend Lola that I can't get to her party tonight? All right. Goodbye. Au revoir, my pet. Oh, hello, Benny. 
Hello, Louise. How do you do? How do you do? Hello. 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 and find myself a bow. <laughs> Nothing. Why? Oh, answer me. Why have you been avoiding me all evening? I danced with you. That was very generous of you. I was grateful. There's no need to be sarcastic. I thought you'd be glad to see me. What's changed you? It's a case of mistaken identity, Venice. I thought you were one sort of girl and you're another. Don't be so cryptic. Well, you won't like what I'm going to say. <laughs> well, say it anyway. Well, I don't particularly approve of a girl who leads on a married man or, or gets a poor chap in such a state that he kills himself when she turns him down. Oh. It wasn't really like that. Oh, no? What was it like, then? Well, Guy Bryson and I had a, well, a sort of an arrangement. It wasn't an affair. Bernie was a fortune hunter. He wanted to marry me for my money. He killed himself because of an unbearable debt to a married woman. Well, you have your piece nicely thought out, anyway. Well, what do you mean? Well, I'm not a child. Don't treat me as if I were. Don't you believe me? No. I wanted to marry you in Paris, and this thing hit me pretty hard. You like that, I suppose. Donny! Oh, why not lay off me till I get my perspective back? And if you're still interested, we might be playmates. Well, you won't be lonesome in the meantime. What are you saying? Oh, don't suddenly go innocent on me. No. You're innocent on myself. That's more important to me. Oh, I've made one mistake. I'll grant that. Everybody makes mistakes. Mine was in idealizing you. I wonder why. You'd be a calamity for any girl unless she sent you to a good fortune teller every day. When you start thinking for yourself, you're really quite stupid. Playmate. You'll be good enough to let me know when you're moving in, won't you? People who live in glass People houses. People who live in glass houses shouldn't live in glass houses. I'll walk, Colin. Yes, miss.
Bennett! There was no particular reason why you had to walk out of Lola's party. People will think you're mad. I like his nerve. What? Oh, you're dense, not deaf. Well, it's a relief to know we speak the same language. We don't. Well, how much longer do you expect to keep up this idiotic pretense? If it's truly idiotic, it fits the occasion. Well, we're not getting anywhere. Good. Well, I had a right to be upset. This chap, Bryson, certainly seemed friendly. I couldn't get a word in with you in Paris. And then he starts hugging you on the station platform even before I'm out of sight. Why? Because I liked it. Oh, I don't believe you. You're not the sort of girl that could, could do that sort of thing. What sort of thing? Well, have affairs. What was your arrangement with Bryson, anyway? What was he to you? A lover. Oh. A lover. And I lured Rennie to his death deliberately. Uh, I did it on a bet. You're a menace to society, aren't you? Yes. May I drop you here? No, I've got some things to talk over with you. Well, I'm not interested. Well, you ought to be, seeing it concerns your marriage. Indeed. Yes. I've decided I'd better marry you now, before you get any worse. Well, I suppose I should be very thrilled. A lady with my past being offered the refuge of holy matrimony. And you, <laughs> you must feel very noble. So wonder your waistcoat can stand the strain. Well, just this once I think it can. Gee, marriage is an appalling thought, isn't it? Sometimes I wonder if I can stand it. You can stand it. With you, I mean. You're so hard to know, Venice. Oh, I don't mind when I'm young being married to a stranger. But when I'm old, intimacy might seem a little immoral if I don't know you very well. You would rather about morals, you. Did you give her back her keys or did she have new ones made? I don't know. I never used it. Much. Why? Didn't it fit? Or did you change the lock? I don't know. Well, you've told me everything you don't know, and I suppose you tell me something you do know. That oughtn't to take long. I love you, Venice. I've wanted to kiss you for such a long time. Kiss me, and let's be officially engaged. Do you think if I married you, there's a chance I could make you thoroughly miserable for the rest of your life? Excellent chance, I should say. Then kiss me, if that's the start. <laughs> 